Hi, today I want to talk a little bit about a topic that I think is very important in understanding finance. One of the things we do in finance quite a bit is go through a lot of calculations. We have formulas for everything. We can calculate the value of a stock using a free cash flow to equity model, a free cash flow to the firm model. We can use relative valuation. We calculate weighted average cost of capital. We calculate additional funds needed. There are almost an infinite number of calculations that we do in finance. And these calculations give us very precise results. For example, if I calculate the value of a stock, I might come up with a value of $123.16. However, I would argue that while these values are very precise, they're precisely wrong. And so it's important to stop and remember in finance, we're dealing a lot with something I like to call false precision. Our models are typically based on inputs that are estimated, and those estimations are going to typically be our best guess. They're not going to be 100% accurate unless you happen to have the magic eight ball that tells you exactly what's going to happen in the future. All you're doing is trying to approximate what you think is going to happen. And it may be a very good approximation. There may be a good logical reason for it. But there are so many things that happen in the future that we can't predict that it's just going to be an approximation. So we have to be very careful because if we put in invalid estimates, we're going to get invalid results. It's the old phrase, garbage in, garbage out. Now, it doesn't mean that everything you're putting into your model is garbage. Hopefully, you've spent some time and come up with some good reasons for the estimates that you have, but they're still estimates. And so we have to be very careful. I want to go through a quick example that I put together. This is a little spreadsheet that I use in my investments class to walk through valuation of a company. And so I went and collected some data here. We have their sales and their property, plant, and equipment, which are a couple of the inputs I use. And then I make forecasts for things like increase in sales, cost of goods sold as a percentage of sales, capital expenditures, estimated tax rate, and so on. Now these are all estimates. So all these numbers in yellow here are things that I'm estimating. And when I put these into the model, over here you can see the results that I get. And so the value of this company last year when I did this was $50.01. Or if we add in the cash balance, and notice this isn't cash balance per share, it's cash balance total. So it doesn't really change the results much, but we get $50.09. And here's that false precision that I'm talking about. It's not $50, it's $50.01, or $50.09. However, what about all these estimates that I made? The tax rate, what if instead of 27%, that works out to be 25% across the board? Let me go ahead and change that. What if the growth rate is not 2.5%, but maybe it's 1.5%. Maybe my growth slows a little bit quicker. So here it's 3%, here it's 2%. Maybe my cost of goods sold is not 85%, maybe it's 87%. Okay, my $50 stock is now worth $32.53, or $32.60. That's a 40% error from where we were before. What if my market risk premium is not 5.5%, what if it's 4.5%? Bang, answers change again. What if my risk-free rate drops to 1.8%? Bang, answers change again. You can see anytime I change these inputs, I get drastically different results here in the outputs. Here is another model that I put together. These have some of the same inputs that we put in before. And you can see here is the value 
based on I forecasted some dividends, I forecasted what the price is going to be based on a price earnings multiple at some point in the future, discounted them back. But again, what if I change my PE? I'm estimating that in 2024 it's going to be 13. What if instead it's 15? Now keep in mind, for that change, $32.36. Change it to 15. Now it's $36.95. What if uh, instead of 13, what if it's 11? Now the value is 27.77. You can see that change is pretty dramatic. It's more than just 20 cents here or 20 cents there. If you're looking at the value of a stock, again, we started with 13. What if it was 15? 36.95 at 11. It's 2777. That's about a third of the value that just got wiped out by changing our price earnings multiple that we anticipate having not next year, not two years from now, but several years out into the future. And if you think you can tell whether the price earnings multiple is going to be 11, 13, or 15, five years out in the future, your Magic 8 Ball must be a little bit better than mine. So we have to be very careful with our analysis because false precision is a big problem. So if false precision is a big problem, what can we do to work around it? One is to recognize that you're dealing with approximations and approximations should be stressed. They're very rough ones. It doesn't mean you're not doing research. It doesn't mean you're not coming up with the best estimates you can come up with. What it means is that there's no way to know exactly what the future is going to hold. As a matter of fact, if you look into an area of finance called behavioral finance, one of the big biases that we see is the overconfidence bias. We tend to think we do a better job of predicting the future than we really do. And we tend to have a lot of overconfidence in other areas as well. But from a finance person making forecasts, that's going to be a big issue. You do not know the future as well as you'd like to think. And I include myself in that. None of us are perfect in our ability to forecast the future. There's just too many random variables that are going to cause that to change. So recognize that you're dealing with approximations and rough ones at that instead of precise answers. If your valuation model tells you the stock is worth $50.01, you're probably better off thinking that's probably somewhere between $45 and $55. And I would argue that may be a little too precise as well. Maybe you want to say, well, if my valuation model says it's $50, probably looking at a range of somewhere between $40 and $60 as a fair value. And you have to be a little bit careful. Once you start broadening that range too much, you start to lose some of the value of your valuation analysis. So if I say the stock is worth between 40 and 60 and it's trading for 42, that means it's fairly valued. It's trading for 58. It's fairly valued. There's a big difference between a stock trading for 42 and 58. So I have to think about the trade-off that's going on here. Just don't take a lot of confidence in your final answer doesn't mean you're not doing a good job. It just means forecasting the future is very, very, very difficult. Another tool that can be helpful is applying some sensitivity analysis. You saw me do that with the spreadsheet as I changed some of the inputs. Only instead of just randomly changing inputs, what you might do is think of a base case, a bear case, and a bull case. And say, okay, if things go wrong, my bear case, what's likely to happen? What are two or three inputs that are likely to be much more negative than I anticipate? On the other hand, if things go right, what things could be better than I anticipate? Again, two, three inputs and change those a little bit. Now, this still is not going to be perfect because you don't know exactly what inputs are going to be different. You don't know how much they're going to be different. But it gives you an idea of how much variance you can expect in your final answer. How sensitive is your model to some of the inputs? So I really recommend doing some sensitivity analysis, 
even if you don't use that in your final decision, it gives you a little feel for how reliable your numbers are. Another thing that's important and I think it's difficult to do is monitor and update constantly. If you're investing in stocks and you have a portfolio of 15 stocks, you need to be keeping track of what's going on with those companies on a regular basis. And that can be time consuming. It's one of the things a lot of people overlook. They do the initial research and they make their buy decision and then they don't update their models. In order to have reliable information, you have to constantly be updating because new information is coming out all the time. And that new information is going to change your story. Another closely related thing that I would add is don't be wedded to your initial story. Be willing to update it. Be willing to admit, yeah, this was something that I believed before, but new information has changed my mind. So don't be hesitant to change your mind. Be flexible, update your models, and try to keep current. But most importantly, just remember, whenever you're doing calculations in finance, you are precise, but precisely wrong. Think in ranges. Don't think of exact answers, and you're going to be far better off. Thank you.